Here's some questions that I got from a Brainwave, a children's science magazine in in India. And the first question right here is last month September, the students of the world celebrated Teachers Day, an overwhelming number of whom would undoubtedly have sent their wishes and gratitude your way. Ho hopefully, and, and no, and I thank everyone for for all of the, the thank you notes we do get on on our our YouTube channel and all the rest. Who was your favorite teacher? Who was your favorite teacher while studying, and why? Um, you know, I'd, I'd have to say I had I had a bunch of, of favorite teachers um, for for I guess multiple reasons, but I guess there is a common thread. I, I would say in in high school the teachers who uh, and, and I don't want to just pick favorites. I'm sure I'm I'm forgetting some some very important people here. Uh, but Mr. Hernandez, who was uh, the first time I had a class with him was for algebra two, but he was also the advisor for the it was called Mu Alpha Theta, which is kind of the the math honor society and also kind of the math competition team. Uh, he was our advisor for that, um, and 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 Miss Kennedy, who was our uh, she was a, an English teacher and also a journalism instructor. And so when I was on the school newspaper, she was kind of our 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 teacher and our advisor. And and I, I think what made both of them. Uh, kind of memorable to me and, and I think were important in, in my own development is that they really did treat me like a peer. They didn't, they never talked down to me. They never said, you know, they, they, it never felt like um, I am the teacher, you are the student. It was, it was kind of a two-way flow of information and it almost felt like we were, um, you know, we, we were working together towards common goals. Mr. Hernandez with, you know, some of the stuff we do with the, the math team Miss Kennedy with some of the stuff we would do with the newspaper. She was just kind of a person who was more knowledgeable and more experienced, but she really respected everything that that we were doing. And I think you know there are probably all of the teachers that I had uh, that that I think really impacted me. Kind of that that's what was what did it for me is that uh, I I remember even in fifth grade I had a teacher Miss Ellis, and. Uh, you know, she would run her fifth grade social t studies classes, kind of like a college seminar. I remember, I, I distinctly remember her uh, kind of being at the front of the class, peeling an orange and just asking us tough questions and, and you know, the type of questions where y you'd kind of have to ponder it for a few seconds before you'd even um, kind of have an interesting thought or you'd, you'd continue pondering it when you went home. And um, I remember there was a... Um, uh, Miss Miss Krauss and Miss Roussel in elementary school, uh, they were gifted teachers, and once again, they had the luxury of of kind of defining what their own curriculum was. But they, um, you know, they really used to challenge us and 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 give us truly creative proje projects to work on. They used to, uh, you know, I, I, when you take art class outside of that, oftentimes it's very formulaic. It's very um, it's kind of paint by numbers, for lack of a better word. But I remember when we did art projects in in, in the context of of the gifted class. It was really very open ended. It was like, here's some tools, make something, uh, and 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 I think that was a really strong message, and it allowed students to actually develop their creativity as opposed to just following, following a formula. So across the board, I think it's the teachers who have, who really treated, um, who really expected something from the students and and treated them with respect, even though you know these these students were clearly early in their learning, uh, but but and also assumed that the students were capable of, of true creativity. I'll, I'll throw another one in there. Dr. Santania, my uh, junior and senior year in high school, I took courses at the at the University of New Orleans, and Dr. Santania was a professor for partial differential equations. And he he kind of brought me under his wing, and, and for a summer I, I was essentially kind of his kind of one of his researchers and I, I you know and he would kind of I, come into the little computer lab where I was working and he would talk about his research and we would bounce eyes off, ideas off of each other and, and it was that type of kind of um, you know being tr you know clearly you know here you are a tenured professor at a university but you're willing to hang out with a 16 or 17 year old it really kind of st sent a very strong message to me and really I think built my my own self-esteem and, and made me think that I could I could do something um, question number two what sort of a student were you at school? Um, I was, I was a, a kid who loved. So I loved, I loved, and this is it's kind of an interesting answer. I think it's it's I, I loved a lot of the subject matter, and I hated a lot of the classes. Um, and it was just I I found a lot of the subject matter really 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 interesting. I just didn't like how it was. Kind of how how it was sometimes presented that and it wasn't the fault of the teacher it was often more usually it was the fault I would say of the textbook or of, of just the curriculum generally, but but just you know the, the general idea it was, everything was devoid of connections you would learn how to how to borrow numbers without anyone telling you why you were borrowing it that way or even uh, without anyone ever asking the students why does this work without ever having a chance to ponder why does it work uh, you'd learn you know for, you know you'd see peers 
kind of memorize one formula for one exam, and then on the next exam, they or by the next month, they've forgotten it. And in the next year, when there's a topic that just builds off of that same formula, that kind of if you just intuitively understood the original formula, the second one would be intuitive, they're re-memorizing a next formula. So I, I really didn't like that that aspect of, um, of, of, of what was going on. And I sometimes kind of, I, I think, for lack of a better word, I, I think I sometimes acted up um, because of that. I, I was actually... Uh, earlier on, uh, I, I kind of straightened up a little bit near near the end of high school. But uh, earlier on, I, I was I wasn't like the discipline problem kid, but I definitely got a lot of um, you know my teachers talking to my my mom about you know Sal not um, being fully engaged in class. Uh, I, I think you know w- once I got to to college, um, you know I, I I was lucky enough to go to a place where. It, there, there was a lot of intellectual curiosity going on. The, the peers were uh, kind of, there was a culture of, of people wanted, wanting to learn. And, and I, I frankly think MIT is, is somewhat unique in that, is that the, the culture really is, I mean, there's other things going on on campus, but most of the people there genuinely want to learn and there's no embarrassment of, of saying that you're actually fascinated by something academic. While at a lot of schools in, in the world, I think there's almost, you almost have to hide uh, that you're you're interested in something. Um, I, I know that was definitely the case in 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 my high school experience. Is that, you know, I would I would I would not even if I was fascinated with by something, I would kind of keep it to myself. For and 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 the, and and sometimes even if even if I I did enjoy talking to the teacher, or so I would actually keep that to myself, and I wouldn't want you know my peers seeing that I was even, um, you know, or sometimes I wouldn't talk to the teacher for for being uh, for fear of being look looking like you're you're you know you're trying to be teacher's pet or something. And I think sometimes I would. Um, maybe overcompensate in, in the other direction. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would say, I mean, I'm giving a long meandering answer. I, I, I would say as a student, I was definitely intellectually curious. Um, I definitely liked to ponder things. Uh, I did not like to be kind of given, I didn't like to paint by numbers, I guess is a simple way to do it. And and, and I oftentimes kind of butted heads with with parts of, of the school system that, that wanted you to paint by numbers and wanted you to move lockstep with, uh, with with everyone else, and wanted you to just accept things without questioning them, and uh, and yeah, and sometimes that that led to some some issues. Number three, number three, could you tell us about any one experience or epiphany that you had that you may have had while growing up that shaped your current attitude towards learning and teaching? You, you know, there, there's a bunch. Um, I think, well, I, you know, the, I I I think. Uh, you know, one story is is that that we tell often now because Shantanu now works at the Khan Academy. He's he's the president here. He uh, I first met him in tenth grade at a at a math competition, and we met in the finals of the math competition. It was this district wide math competition? In the last round, it was me, Shantanu, and it was another another boy, and Shantanu d- did beat me, and so that was a, a good experience, a humbling experience. But uh, above and beyond that, while we were competing, we actually had a little bit of a conversation, and it actually turned out that Shantanu was, uh, uh, even though we were both in the tenth grade, he was a math class ahead of me, and and I asked him, I was like, how did you, how does that happen? And, and he said, well, I just tested out of the math class you're taking right now, and so for me that was an epiphany that one that that was even a possibility. I went, I then went back to my high school and. When I told people about, I told you know I went back to the administration. I said, "Hey, can I test out of stuff?" They're like, "Oh, we're not aware of anything like that." So, it, 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 but but what what Shatnu did is he he awakened the possibility that you can do that. It ended up being a lot harder, not harder in terms of the subject matter mastery, but a lot harder in terms of convincing the system that you should be allowed to test out of something. And once you do pr- prove that you know something, that you should be allowed to go into the next thing. Uh, but but that kind of gave me the energy to do it, and that that really did accelerate my own learning, and and frankly that allowed me to have a lot of those experiences that I just mentioned with someone like Dr. Santini. I would have never ended up taking partial differential equations at the University of New Orleans while in high school had I not had that 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 conversation with Shantanu to that made that opened my mind to the idea that you really can um, kind of, for lack of a better word, fight the system and and go at your own pace. Um, I think. Other learnings, you know, once once I started taking classes at the university, even in high school, uh, you know, university class attendance was completely optional, and I sometimes, you know, I, I took advantage of that, and I realized that I did learn a lot better um, from from a book than oftentimes than a lecture. And it wasn't that lectures are fundamentally bad. I mean, here I am, someone making all these YouTube videos. It's just that the book allowed me to learn at my own pace. If I was confused by something, I could read the same passage 10 times. If I found something easy, I didn't have to, I could just skim something. And in lecture, you kind of, 
it was hard to stay engaged. I, I always found that I was either lost or I was bored. Or and very few times in a lecture that I was exactly at the right place, exactly connecting with with kind of the pace of the class. And so you know, at, at the University of New Orleans, where I spent essentially my tenth and eleventh, my te- my eleventh and twelfth grades in in high school, um, I, I, I to a large degree showed up for the exams, but did a lot of self paced study. And that kind of carried with me when I went to MIT. Is that I. I, I, I realized that, you know, class time, maybe it works for some, but it, it didn't work a lot for me. I would have loved class time that was interactive, that was that hands-on. I loved lab time. You know, in all my computer science classes, I would skip class and go to the computer lab and, and work on my projects. And I felt like I was learning the material much better than um, listening, uh, you know, sitting in a 300-person lecture hall and, and listening to a lecture about something. It was much better to fiddle with the thing. Um, and I think the ideal would have been having videos on demand so that if I was curious about a topic, I could get some videos, pause, repeat, watch them as much as I need to, but then have all this extra time, and preferably with the rest of my, my peers and the professor around, uh, so I could actually fiddle with stuff and, and build stuff. And, and those that's where I, I, I feel the best, the best learning happens. And so that's what we're trying to do with the Khan Academy. We're trying to make class time about interaction and about fiddling and about um, helping each other, letting humans be humans, and allow a lot of the core skills to happen at, at someone's own pace through on-demand video and through and through exercise. And I want to be clear, you know, I said that I liked textbooks a lot, and I still like textbooks. I'm reading many right now. Uh, but I think a combination of on-demand, exor- uh, on-demand videos and exercises that give immediate feedback uh, can be better for the purposes of all of, of self-paced learning. I mean, when I was 16 and I was kind of trying to, you know, chug through some type of a, um, you know, a, 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 an analysis book or a partial differential equations book, it's dense reading. And it's, it took, you know, you had to kind of be very persistent to kind of read through that. And I would have loved a 10 minute video on the exact topic that I was ready for. And I would have loved practice problems where you don't just have every other answer at the back of the book, you have immediate feedback. You know how to do the steps of that problem. You know what videos to watch if you don't know how to do that problem. And in the videos, they're not just it's not just dry text. It's actually someone trying to communicate intuition to you, someone trying to in- communicate not, not just the methodology, but really the art of, of the mathematics or, or the science. Question number four. Question number four. What excites you most about learning science? Um, well, you know, it, it really is that science is is all about really trying to find the truth in the universe. Uh, you know, we'll never probably know all of the truth in the universe, but I think that's what separates humans from every other species that we know is that we are just naturally curious and we are gen- we are naturally in awe of of the mysteries of this universe. And science is is our best tool at trying to at trying to demystify. Uh, the mysterious, and I mean, frankly, what it does is it just introduces even more and even more profound mysteries. The the, the deeper and deeper you go into science, I mean, just just this journey, uh, you know, kind of working on the Khan Academy videos, I've I've gone so much deeper in so many areas of science, but it's given me so much more appreciation for how much deeper the open questions are. And so, um, you know, I think I think science is science when you when someone is really in science, it it really is catering to those same. Um, you know, it, it, it caters to that part of the human instinct that 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 gives you awe, that 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 you start to appreciate where you are in the universe and what the universe might be about, or or how or how uh, intertwined and elegant uh, the universe we are we're, we're in act- actually is. So it's you know, I, I guess you know that yeah, I I don't know what you know. It's I guess it's just, it's just exciting. Question number five. Question number five. As a teacher who has impacted so many lives, do you have any advice for our young readers who find it hard to concentrate on their studies or perform well in exams? Um, yeah, I mean, my, my main advice is as as much as you can, try to ponder what you are learning. Um, don't just try to cram for an exam. Don't try to memorize formulas. If you feel that the formulas you're looking at for your current class are just beyond your understanding, then back up. Look at the, what you learned last year, the year before. Get to a point where you can start to see why those things are intuitive. And, and hopefully you watch Khan Academy videos so that that's what we try to do, show you why these things are intuitive, why they aren't formulas to memorize. And uh, once you start to ponder things, um, it'll you'll start to ponder things all the time. You know, I mean, my, my wife, 
you know, jokes that it often takes me half an hour to throw out the trash because I like take out the trash. And while I'm holding the trash can, I sometimes I'm just like staring out at the, you know, the sky for like 10 minutes because uh, I'm pondering something. And, and it's maybe the most fun thing to be doing is, is pondering something. And, and the more you ponder something, it gets your brain just building connections. And uh, then as you progress through more and more advanced courses, they'll just start to seem more and more obvious. You'll all, almost say like, well, why is this a new course? This is just a, a kind of a natural a byproduct of what, what I had already pondered. Um, and, and you know, frankly, it'll, it'll, it'll help you not just in your academics. I think it'll help you be a, a more creative uh, person. And, and that's frankly what's really, really, really matters is the ability to see things where maybe other people aren't seeing things, see way better ways of doing things, seeing innovations, seeing connections that other people aren't seeing. So I would say ponder as much as you can, learn as deeply as you can, make sure that your foundations are as strong as you can. And, um, you know, and then after that, if there are, if there is the mundane aspect and there are mundane aspects of our current school systems and our current exams, you know, just view that as a game, as a game that lets you get to the good stuff. And that's how I viewed it. I mean, there were definitely moments in my own education where I was like, this is silly. They're making me do this or that. But I said, you know what? I have to do this if I if I want to get to a point where I get to do more pondering and I get to look at the really cool stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say view it. It's a, a ponder as much as you can, tr so that you can really distill things to what's most important. And then the stuff that's still not fun after that, you know, just just remind yourself that it's a you know it's 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 a bit of a marathon and 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 you gotta. Uh, it, it's it's going to get you to to where you're going, so that your life will be more fun <laughs> at some point, and hopefully it's hopefully it's already a little fun uh, right now.